In this video, we're going to show you how to create this little frilly rhinestone frame very quickly and easy using Easy Stone. And then in part two of the video, we're going to show you how to uh, go about creating the insert for it. And in that video, we're going to show you how to do the soccer ball version of what you see here that we did for our basketball. So our insert in this case is going to be a glitter uh, cut insert. And then we're going to show you how to create the, the soccer ball version of this. We are going to provide the finished project files for you in the video description below. So you'll have the finished product um, as well as the different uh, images that we use in creating the design originally. So you can try this little project out for yourself. So the first thing we need is a heart shape. So we're going to come in here to our custom toolbar, click on our basic shape tool, choose the heart shape here from a toolbar and just draw out whatever type of heart shape you want. Now the next thing to do is to size our heart shape and our original heart shape should be about five inches to start with. Now in order to create this little frilly design what we need to do is we need to offset our original heart shape. So we're going to come in here to the stone fill tab. In island fill I'm going to start out with 15 offsets. Now the amount of offset is already predetermined for us based on the stone size and spacing we have specified. Now we certainly can override this spacing, but this will give us optimum spacing to create a frame that is almost identical to what you're seeing here. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to right click on Island Fill and that will create a series of offsets to the outside. What I want to do now is take the very outside path and just take a look and see how big it is. And you can see it's 9.6 inches, which is maybe a little bit wide for, for this design. So we'll go ahead and delete that one. And let's look at the next one in. And you can see it's 9.299. So I think that's fine. Um, so the overall width of the design will be right at nine and a quarter inches. So now the next thing to do is let's take the original heart shape and give it a color. Now the path directly to the outside we're going to delete. So let's just delete that path because we're not going to use that one. Okay, so if you look here in the original design, you can see there's a little little distance between our glitter basketball heart and the start of our frame. Okay, so that's kind of how we went about creating that. So now the next thing to do is to go about adding stones to all the remaining pads. So let's hop back over here to the stone tab. Let's choose crystal from the list of options here. I'm going to select all these paths by holding down my Alt key and just doing a marquee select over the top of them. And you can see now all of those paths are now selected. Now in Easy Stone, if we hold down the Alt key and click on Add Stones, it has the same effect as turning on Detect Corners. So that's what we're going to do. Alt, Add Stones. And you can see what Easy Stone does is it adds stones to the all those paths. Now right now it doesn't really look that exciting um, but if I select this first path around the heart and give it a different color just so we can kind of see it you can see what I'm selecting there. So what I'm going to do for this is I'm going to go ahead and delete the entire left hand side. So again with my pick tool Alt Marquee Select hit delete and you can see now I only have half of my heart paths. Now if I click on this first set of blue stones here you can see right here there's 54 stones along that path. So one effect that we can do is we can select all these other paths. So again, I'm in my pick tool, hold down my alt key, click and drag, and specify 54, which is the same number of stones that the original path had. When I click on add stones, it will set each one of those paths to 54 stones as well. Okay, so now if I add a weed box behind the design, you could see more specifically the effect that we get. We get this kind of real straight starburst pattern, which is pretty cool in and of itself, right? So we want to do something a little bit different from that. So let's just go ahead and take a look at that. So the original path we know had 54 stones. And what we're going to do for each ring that we go out, we're going to reduce the stone count. And in this example, we're going to reduce the stone count by four. Now, if you reduce the stone count by two or by six or whatever, whatever amount of stones you reduce, it's going to have a, a different uh, effect in a different pattern.
even if you just reduce one stone at a time. So let's just show you what it looks like, okay? So the, so the next path out is 54. We're going to change it to 50, okay? And then click Add Stones. Now there's only 50 stones on that path instead of 54. Click on the next path out, and we're going to go from 50 to 46. Add Stones. And then we're going to go from 46 to 42. Add Stones. 42 to 40, uh, 38 to 34 to 30 to 26 to 22. to 18, to 14, just going to zoom out here a little bit, to 10, and to 6. Okay, and now this original design we're just going to go back in and just uh, choose Add Stones just to put the color back to the way it was. And then what I think would be interesting just to see what type of impact it might have is take one of these and change the color. So let's just swap that out to Fuchsia, for example, and we'll hit Rename and Fill. And that one path we're going to do in Fuchsia Stones. So now what we're going to do is select the entire right-hand side and just flip it over. So we're going to grab the control handle, flip it, and hit the control key. That will flip it proportionally perfectly. Right click to make a duplicate. Then we're going to just pick up that duplicate from center of stone to center of stone. Then what we're going to do is let's just go ahead and make our weed box a little bit wider. And now you can kind of see the design that we created and how very, very similar it is to the original. And if you look at all these stones, they're almost identical. And that is because uh, we reduced the stone count by four. You would get a very different result if you only reduce the stone count by, say, one or two. Or if you increase the stone count, you would get a different uh, result even more. So it just play around with either increasing or decreasing the number of stones per outline and you'll see what kind of a, an effect it has. So now what we want to do uh, is take a look at finishing off this design. So what I usually do is I usually create my design in stages. So that's stage one. Then we'll select the whole thing, copy it over. So now we have an exact duplicate. Now if you look here, we have all these paths that we need to get rid of. So we'll just select all of those, come in here, delete stone paths, and now you can see all of our stone paths are gone. The original heart shape is still there because it wasn't a stone path. Um, just, this, just the paths that the stones were applied to. Now we do have some overlapping stones. So what we should do is take care of those. So we'll select the whole design, come over to the miscellaneous tab and choose check spacing. It's going to take a look at and find that there are 26 overlapping stones. So it's going to go ahead and get rid of those. We won't actually see anything happen because there are stones on top of stones, um, but you can see they have a pretty good looking design now. Now if I wanted to, just to kind of just show you a little extra element, if I decide somewhere along the line that I don't want that one string of fuchsia stones, just go ahead and select that stone, come to the selection tab and mark it, and then we can say select all these stones. We've got crystal and fuchsia and just hit create selection and now we've isolated just the fuchsia stones I could delete them which might have an interesting effect to delete one path or if I just wanted to change their color then I could do that as well and for this example I think I want them there I just I don't want a different color we're just going to do this all in one okay so that takes care of the frame, that's it. So we're just going to go ahead and make a duplicate of our heart. 
And then in part two, we're going to show you how to take this heart and make it into a soccer ball glitter design um, and all the various steps that are involved in doing that. So be sure and check out part two for the soccer ball glitter design.